Hey guys, it's Matty Ace. Yeah, I fucked up a bit. Anyway, I'm going to continue my new Reaver series here with uh, a video that I'm focusing mostly on range, but I'll also post comment a little bit and let you know what's happening here. Yeah, I've been farming these guys there at um, Rust Mesa Lookout and eventually they got me. Now I miscalculated a bit, little bit. I thought there was only two guys locking onto me and since I killed one of them, I only expected to get hit by one of those lock-ons. But yeah, unfortunately there was a third guy, so that's how it goes. Oh shit, yeah, first before we continue this, I have to uh, block out my name so that the scrubs like Yalabad uh, can't figure out who my hidden smurf really is. There we go. So anyway, one of, uh, no, two of the key things about uh, the way I fly here are, uh, number one, the angle uh, from at where I approach. I try to fly low in order for them not to see me coming, and I'm also trying to hit them a little bit, or s semi from behind, from the side or from behind. And it works to some degree, I mean, eventually uh, they'll figure it out, but by then I've hopefully been able to get a few kills. Now the other thing that is also really important to pay attention to, if, if this is something that you're interested in, is how and when to use the afterburners correctly, because uh, if you use the rocket parts, uh, for example, like some people have suggested, or maybe the coyotes or lock-ons in order to be more... Um, uh, to, to be able to defend yourself better against enemy aircrafts, you're going to have to give up a lot of uh, the possibilities to escape quickly, burst away, and that's mostly what I use my um, afterburners for, is that uh, it, it is to escape flak and lock-ons after the engagement. Uh, oh shit, hang on guys. Okay, I'm leaving the first part of the gameplay here completely uncut, so... Uh, I'm looking for engagements here, uh, I'm partly looking for air as well, and uh, so I was able to find a couple of Terran players here, and notice how I actually uh, decided not to go for the Max there, I just uh, went for the softies. The fact is, if the Max is not an anti-air Max, then the infantry is actually potentially more dangerous, mostly the heavies of course. Now there you could probably see that at first it was only the maxes that it rendered and then once I got within 300 meters of the infantry players they started rendering as well and of course next time around I knew where they were and I was able to get a triple with that magazine and yeah this guy was able to get away and I decided to disengage here because I didn't want to attract the uh, lock-ons and flak too much here. Let me go through this uh, in slow motion here the latest engagements. I'm coming in here I see the Max rendering, I shoot at him, I think one, two, three shots, and then the infantry render four shots, and then with one, two, three shots, I was able to pick off that medic from range that I normally don't shoot at with the air hammer, or I haven't so far, I would say. Now that I know where they are, I just make a turnaround, a break line of sight when I'm reloading and I'm coming back from what I think is a slightly better angle because of the cover from that tower. This time around I will empty the entire clip and I put all of the 8 shots into the group of infantry players uh, just because, yeah, I know exactly where to put my aim. And this time it gives me a triple kill. So now in any discussion that is regarding the air hammer or any other type of shotgun, there are plenty of players that will point out the lack of a range. Now I'm not going to pretend that I know more about the range than I actually do, so I'm going to let you uh, judge for yourselves what you believe is the effective range of the air hammer. So now the trait of the air hammer and the most unique thing about the air hammer is its versatility. Uh, so far in this series I've only covered air to ground and uh, only uh, its anti-infantry role in uh, that part of air to ground. Now I'm going to show you a couple of other things that uh, I have recorded while playing here NC on uh, Cobalt and uh, it's going to be a little bit more about uh, some of the versatility, it's going to be a little bit more of air to air and uh, also I, I will cover a little bit of the default nose gun as well. Now if you did miss the first part of this uh, series uh, I will put the link to that video in the description. There will also be some other related videos there, such as Benchy, PPA, and also some Airhammer gameplay from the server Miller. 
Now, one of the funniest reactions I get from uh, these type of videos are the, the the still people that keep saying that, yeah, try that on, uh, I think it was Miller this time. Yeah, try that on Miller, Matty. We, we would just decimate you if you if you try that. It's so funny. I, I have a level 80 on Miller, and I have done this on basically every server I had a better rank 50, 55 or some such on uh, the server Waterson. I had uh, two characters on uh, Madison. I had a, uh, let me see, I had a Terran on Woodman, and uh, yeah, that's only to mention the smurfs that I have revealed. Another thing is that a lot of people consider air to be overpowered, but that's, the sh that's what's surprising me so much. If air is so overpowered, then why is it that people are not preparing for it? Because when I'm flying with any other character than the ones that have my name in it, it's it's basically it's like playing another game. If I said that I take more than 20 times the damage when I play with any of my main characters, then believe me, that is a massive understatement. I also have to mention that I do understand that this is quite difficult for new players to get into, not only because flying in itself is quite hard, but one of the things that I was reminded of making these uh, videos is that it actually makes a big difference having the right upgrades and putting the right search uh, into your ESF. And uh, yeah, I'll, I might cover that in the future, but before I was uh, level 30, I would say, I was actually struggling with this due to uh, yeah due to the lack of um, fire suppression, airframe, and uh, auto repair, and also of course thermal and uh, the magazine size. It, it, those things makes a big difference. Now it's a little bit hard for me to give advices to uh, new players because I assert my ESF for the way that suits me being an already experienced pilot. But I will let you know how I asserted this reaver in an upcoming video. So with that I will say thank you all for watching and bye for now.